Well, that was interesting. <laughs> Definitely not something you see every day. In fact, I, I know the location of all the military bases in Alberta, and we are not by any means in the direct flight path between any of them. Maybe that's just some type of a, uh, maybe they're going to a festival or something. Festival during COVID. Social media is a bit of an interesting one. And I think there's different levels of it. Uh, this obviously, this platform is a form of social media. However, in a certain sense, it, it started out much different. This YouTube was just a place to share videos. And I think I had my first YouTube, I know I had my first YouTube account before YouTube was owned by Google. I remember after they monetized, I had some some videos, I was riding my bicycle to work. It was a 26 mile commute each direction. And I remember I was riding to work one day and there's a crop duster and I, I love airplanes. And so I pulled over, I took some video footage of this crop duster and then I put a song to it. And for a good long while, there was no problem with that because YouTube wasn't monetized. And then uh, later on, I got a notice saying that uh, my video was like striked and that any money made from that was going to Thomas Bjorn and Jan. At the same time, I had a bicycle blog. It's still up, it's jeromesbikes.blogspot.com. But then everything switched to these, I call them less meaty social media platforms. Uh, Instagram, Facebook, uh, TikTok, not even trying that one out. But my wife and I watched this interesting documentary the other day and it's called um, The Social Dilemma. And this is actually a very popular video right now. You know the thing I'm finding, especially in this day and age, is that what is actually real? What are we being told that's true and what's not true? And I've always wondered this, but the premise of this documentary was they had a lot of employees, ex-employees of these social media companies, places like Facebook, Instagram, uh, Pinterest, and they kind of talk about, you know, the number one driving force of all of these platforms is to keep you on the platform. They want your eyeballs on the screen. They don't want you to ever take your eyes off the screen. And initially the concepts were good. They're a way to share. You know, Facebook was a way you could connect with loved ones, keep in touch. And then there kind of was money involved, right? And then we start seeing ads and I have no issues with that whatsoever. Obviously running these platforms costs money. But then the interesting thing, they kind of talk about these algorithms that they've designed and they're designed to feed the individual user kind of what they think they want to see based on your past performance, based on what you've interacted on in the past. But one really interesting point that I took away from this is that, and I've kind of experienced this myself, is that, you know, say I've got my certain beliefs and the way I see the world, my worldview is right here. These social media outlets, they kind of feed me stuff that's exactly pinpointed to where I'm at. They're preaching to the choir. Now, say if I have a friend who has a very radical view than me, and I do have friends that think completely different than I do, I've got a really good friend that believes in aliens, like like really actually believes in aliens, not just not just saying that, he actually does. And, and we've had in-depth debates and he thinks there's all these signs on earth that point to that and with the Aztecs and this and that, but he receives exactly that stuff on his social media. And where this becomes interesting is when you look at kind of what the world's going through right now, we are so polarized. There's this side and there's that side. There's no people, there's a side and a side. So I'm saying sides because <laughs> to look at this, you have to look at one side or the other. You know, there's a right, there's a left, right, left. You have to kind of look at that, but they're getting the exact opposite thing than you are. So we're just kind of funneling information that just kind of bolsters up our personal beliefs and the opposite is getting personal information that bolsters up their beliefs and now we're just getting so jacked up on knowledge and information and it's like, how could you not see this? The algorithm is not showing them this, it's showing them this. That is kind of freaky in my opinion and that's, I honestly wonder how much of what we're going through as a society right now is based on social media and I think if you stop and think honestly, I believe it is way more powerful and it, it should get way more credit for the div divisiveness that we're seeing right now uh, than it does. People don't think about that. They don't think that, hey, I feel this certain way and these people are bad and this is the way it should be and this is what's going on. A lot of that, bah, the pounding your fist on the table, making your point, is stuff that's just been like bolstering you up to get to that point. So kind of going back a little bit to the bicycle blog thing, uh, I had a lot of bike blogs that I enjoyed and we talked about bikes, you know, different accessories, different ways of riding, different this and that. And Google had a service called Google Reader where I could take all my favorite bike blogs, plug them into this thing and I would get a continual feed. Now, I don't think there was ever advertising on that platform, I never saw it. But ultimately the thing I loved about it is that I was in complete control. 
And I think that's completely different to today's social media with Facebook, Instagram, you're kind of not really in control. And I know, you know, you've seen people talk about the algorithms and how, uh, you know, people that you used to follow, they just don't show up anymore and how they don't just post things chronologically, like the most recent post is first. And it's interesting the way they shift these things and manipulate these things. And ultimately, I truly don't believe they want us to be in control of our own social media. They want to feed us what they think is going to keep us there. I think there's a part where we as a people need to take a little more, more personal responsibility as to how we use these social platforms. Sometimes I'll try to look something up on Instagram and I'll be like, oh, I just want to find out what this person, this person had a post about this bike part. And I'll try and find that post. And in the meantime, I'll end up seeing something else, following another hashtag rabbit trail. And next thing you know, I've spent like 15 or 20 minutes and I'm totally enthralled with something else. And I'm like, oh, I should get back to work. Oh shoot, I was working on this bike, but I... That part to me is kind of terrifying. How much of our lives are just gone into useless thumb flipping. Like, like you know, when I'm on Instagram, I'm like this. Mm -hmm. So, something radical is about to happen. As you folks are my witness, this is Instagram. Check this out. In three, two, one. You know, I think technology is fantastic. And when you think about the tool that is your smartphone, it's absolutely incredible. But I think the thing that I myself personally need to remember is that it's just a tool. It's there to help me do what I want to do. But at the same time, if I'm really honest with myself, this thing probably steals at least an hour of my life every single day that doesn't help me do what I want to do. And I'm trying to take control of my own time. Thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Cheers.